for the foreseeable future. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Patterson. Uh, Senator Ludlam. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Patterson, thanks for coming in. A um, couple of questions just on, on the recent budget. The funding increase of, for ANSTO of $8.1 million in 2013 14 to meet the increasing costs of the Opal plant. Um, so, budget paper two identifies the cost of nuclear fuel and electricity has increased significantly in recent years. What can you tell us about the trends in the cost of nuclear fuel? Well, uranium price is very low, but obviously something else is going on. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Senator. Uh, the, the cost of uh, nuclear fuel is associated mainly with the uh, fabrication cost, not the underlying cost of the uh, uranium. Um, in the supply chain uh, for nuclear fuel, there is uh, quite a lot of pressure on the current um, organisations that produce that fuel. Um, over time, that has uh, uh, led to price increases that were greater than those originally envisaged when we uh, modelled uh, the reactor and its performance. And you'll be very familiar with the uh, increases in the price of electricity, which is another big driver uh, in uh, multi-purpose reactors. These factors have been brought to the attention um, of our department over a period of time, and uh, they strongly supported uh, the uh, one-year new policy proposal with an increase of 8.1 million in, in relation to that, uh, uh, those cost drivers. Where do you see trends in the cost of nuclear fuel going? Are we going to see these requests on the budget every year? I think, in principle, uh, the uh, embedded uh, increase in cost represented by the 8.1 uh, million should become an ongoing uh, provision. Uh, the growth over and above that uh, 8.1 million is very much dependent on unpredictable uh, electricity markets. What we're doing in respect of nuclear fuel is working with a number of the other uh, research reactors which have similar needs to us. Uh, to see if we can diversify the, the, the supply, uh, introduce more competition into that marketplace, and thereby reduce the costs over time. Okay. At present, I can't give a lot of confidence that that's going to happen in the very short term, but I think there's reasonable prospects in the medium term that that'll happen. Thank you. Um, so 28.7 million is listed for the decommissioning of HIFAR. Uh, predisposal of existing radioactive, radioactive waste in prep for long-term storage. So that's again in budget paper two. And I think we've seen these expenses coming down the line in prior years, but could you break out for us the cost of the three distinct areas recognised in the 28.7 uh, million? So um, disaggregate for us the cost of the decommissioning of HIFAR, the, predispos uh, the predisposal condition of existing waste, and thirdly, the clean-up of buildings and infrastructure containing hazardous waste. Uh, thank you, Senator. I'll take that on notice and uh, provide it to you. All right, thanks. Um, so you recall reviews that we've been following for a while, conducted in 2011 and 12, into health and safety culture at ANSTO uh, and related incidents, accidents, sacking of whistleblowers and so on. Um, several of these documents do report improvements at ANSTO and have made recommendations for further improvements. So can you tell us how you're tracking implementation of... of uh, further improvements of health and safety culture at ANSTO. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, there are a number of initiatives that we have taken uh, over the last uh, two years. Um, at the request of Comcare, we improved our investigation procedure and qualified all of our investigators against the Australian standard that is now in place and has been recognised uh, by Comcare. Uh, we were asked to uh, pilot on behalf of Comcare their uh, questionnaire in relation to uh, bullying. We did that in our last staff engagement uh, survey. We were, I believe, the first Commonwealth organisation to do so. That's we interesting. We shared the results um, of using the Comcare um, uh, questions with Comcare and they were very, very satisfied with the answers that were given by ANSTO staff to those questions and applauded us for being proactive in, address, in, in addressing uh, the issue, uh, which is very prominent uh, in discussions um, around Australia at the moment, as you'll okay, know, Senator. Thanks. We've only got we you for a brief <coughs> period of time. Are you able to provide us with, obviously, de-identified summary of the findings of your survey? Yes, I believe it would be useful to provide that. That'd be great, thank you. Um, in how, how many court cases or legal proceedings is ANSTO engaged in at, at present with current or former employees? Um, I'll take that on notice, Senator. Are there a number of foot? 
I, I'm not absolutely sure of the exact number at the moment. It's a small number, but I would like to be accurate in respect to the number I provide. All right, more than zero. So we'll, we'll take that one on notice. Um, uh, this might also have to go in on notice. How much has ANSTO spent in the last um, five financial years on external legal advice and representation? We'll provide that on notice, Senator. Thanks, Dr Patterson. Um, do you have, do you, would you consider that you currently have adequate staffing or would you agree that there are several sections of ANSTO in which workload increases due to lack of staff is resulting in increasing stress? We have not detected uh, anything of, of that nature on a systematic basis. Okay. Uh, the workload uh, is specifically monitored. Uh, we do review uh, the workload of individuals and groups of staff members, uh, but I know of no systematic situation where people feel that there is an adequate staff headcount in a particular area. Okay. So, well, my next question was which parts of ANSTO are experiencing understaffing? Is your answer would, would be none? We, we have a flexible staffing arrangement in our enterprise bargaining agreement and uh, we make use of that to make sure that staff can be deployed right across the site as appropriate and that is working extremely well. Okay. Um, could you indicate again that, that these next couple again might need to be taken on notice as they're a little technical. Um, how many disputes with employees over the last five years have resulted in deeds with gag orders being signed that prevent comment to the press and that sort of thing? It's a highly technical question because we don't use language like gag orders in what deeds. What sort of language we complete. do you use? We sometimes complete uh, deeds as a, a matter of uh, bringing to an end discussions in relation to disputes we have with employees, but I don't think that we intend to um, specifically uh, gag people. It's, it's just a matter of course that when you've finished a matter, it should be finished and not of a continuing nature. Okay. How many of those sort of deeds have been signed? I will take it on notice, Senator, and uh, reply to you. Thank you. <clears throat> How many Comcare cases are you aware of that are currently underway regarding ANSTO employees? Would that be uh, Comcare investigations, uh, Senator? Yeah. Or I don't know of any Comcare investigations at present. None. I think there are none. Thanks, Dr. Patterson. Um, is a Mr. Dr. Robert Blissett still responsible for human resources and workplace health and safety at ANSTO? Um, I'm not sure that he has a doctorate, but there is a Robert Blissett who heads no, up our work, health and safety and human resources function. Okay. There's no bio of that gentleman on your site, or there, though there is for most of your senior management team. Could you confirm for us on notice what his qualifications are for that role and what his past experiences in the HR field are? I'd be very happy to do that. Thank you. Um, does ANSTO insist that employees only see ANSTO nominated doctors when they're needing medical advice? Uh, that wouldn't be the case, but if it's in relation to uh, workplace events, we do propose and suggest that that is one of the avenues that we have to expedite people's return to work. Do you, you, you propose and suggest that? Do you insist on that? Is that a matter of choice for your employees? In a number of cases uh, where there is a dispute about the facts of uh, a person's health, uh, we do insist on it. You do? Yes. Okay. Are doctors, or are doctors that are chosen by the employees themselves considered of less credibility? No, they are considered as part of a team to get the optimal strategy to return people to work and to allow them to have a fulfilling experience in the workplace. Even if the employees would much rather see a doctor from outside of ANSTO, you would still nonetheless insist? We, we never inhibit an employee from finding their own uh, medical health care and support. But in relation to employment matters, I think it is, it, it's important that the employer has an, an opportunity uh, to confirm with the uh, team of people who are looking after the person what the most optimal strategies are. And this sometimes requires independent medical advice for us. Okay. Um, last one for me, because we're just about out of time. The chairman of the board of ANSTO, who was appointed February 2011, Dr Paul Greenfield, stepped down as VC of the University of Queensland. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. Okay. So that was after a November 2011 integrity investigation found irregularities in the enrolment of a student known to him. Did that scandal have any bearing on his role at ANSTO? And was the suitability of a person who was accused effectively of nepotism discussed by the board before his appointment? Um, <clears throat> I uh, believe that it was discussed uh, by the board. Um, I wasn't present in the session at which it was discussed and I was informed uh, afterwards of the results of that discussion. 
It was also discussed at uh, the time with our department. And to that matter.